Welcome back. Managing your money. The Bureau of Labor Statistics reports there are now 73.5 million women in the U.S. workforce, compared to just 18.4 million back in 1950. An annual report from American Express shows as of 2018, there are more than 12 million women-owned businesses in the United States. My next guest says women face unique challenges when it comes to financial management. Joining us right now with his insight is David Bach. He's the author of Smart Women Finish Rich. He's also co-founder of uh, AE Wealth Management. David, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good to be back. And you're celebrating the 20th anniversary of this book, which is quite extraordinary. It, it, it's the help women of all ages take control of their financial future. Tell us what the key takeaway is today. How can women take control of their financial future today, 20 years after yeah, you wrote I, I, the first book? You know, 20 years ago, I was on a crusade to get women to take charge of their financial life. Today, women are doing it. But here's the critical issue. Women face a unique gap when it comes to retirement. And the gap is this. You live longer. So the average age of widowhood right now in this country is 59. 80% of men will die married. 80% of women die widowed. Wow. So as a woman 80%. Today, 80%. Wow. So as a woman today, what you need to know is this. Your retirement is going to be 5, 10, maybe 20 years longer than the man in your life. So you have to have more money set aside for retirement. But there are three things impacting women financially. One, you still earn less. You're now earning 82 cents on the dollar on average. But women are still taking an average of 11 and a half years off from work for childbearing years. And the number's grown because they're taking care of parents. It's grown by about two and a half more years because it's women that typically take care of mom and dad when they get sick. That's impacting women financially about a million dollars in earnings, and it's impacting how much they have set aside for Social Security and 401k plans. So my message to women across America is this. You have to save more than the man in your life is saving. Hmm. You need to be saving a minimum. This is a number that's hard to hear. But you need to be saving a minimum of 15% of your gross income. Now, when you simplify that, it's one hour a day of your income. So if you come to work here at Fox and you save the first hour a day of your income into your 401k plan with your company's match, you hit that number. Unfortunately, most women are saving half of that today. So you are becoming the primary breadwinners across America, but you have to be saving more. I don't know why women don't save more. That, that, I mean, we're big savers, but, but, but why? What's stopping them from saving? Well, let's talk to Trump for a second, and I'll tell you what should be done. We're not teaching our kids about money in school. Mm. So I say that on this network because I believe what this president could do to make a serious change across America is create a financial literacy program for kids in school. Mm. Just like we had a presidential fitness program, we need a presidential financial fitness program. We have to be teaching our kids about money in school, but parents today, moms and dads, if you have a daughter, you have to make it your personal crusade to teach your daughter about money before she goes to college. We have $1.5 trillion in student debt right now. Mom, dad, you need to be saying to your daughter, I want you in charge of your money from day one. Yeah, I agree with that. When you control the money, you control your life. Yeah. Yeah, coddling and spoiling them and giving them gifts that even the parents can't afford, that doesn't really teach them that, does it? But, I mean, that's an issue, is that they don't, again, there's no transparency between parent and child in terms of what things really cost and how, how many hours you would have to work to lease that car that your parents lease for you when you turn 16 or 18. No, you're exactly right. And I think, look, my grandmother helped me. This book is dedicated to my grandma Rose Bach. She was a, didn't have a college education, what, you know, started with nothing. At 30, she was broke. She became a self-made millionaire by learning how to invest. She helped me buy my first stock at age seven. And I teach grandparents and mothers and fathers, you can start your kids investing at a very young age if you teach them the lessons of how to be an investor. She helped me buy my first stock in McDonald's. It was my favorite restaurant in the whole world. Mm -hmm. Today, my kids own Shake Shack. They own Netflix. They own Amazon. So teaching your children how to think like investors instead of just spenders, right? My grandmother said to me at McDonald's, you can come here and eat and spend money, or you can own the company and get rich. In America, how you build wealth is you own things. Yeah, it starts at home. There's no doubt It starts about at home. Damage. David, I want to go back to the financial literacy education initiative, because I'm with you 100%, and I spend a lot of time doing that in schools myself. But what do we need to do? Obviously, maybe the president's watching and he heard you, but what do we need to do systemically around that? Is it bottom up or is it top down? How do we sort of change policy and culture in this country? So we've been trying to do bottom up. It 
it's got to be, t and it's not worked, right? Because financial literacy is not a part of the core curriculum. So wealthy not schools... Not even required by it's, most states. It's, right. Wealthy schools have it, and less wealthy schools don't. So it needs to be in the core curriculum, so it's a part of, you have to learn this in order to graduate school. The only other way to do this, and this is why I say this about President Trump, is that the president actually could go and sign an initiative that says, we're going to have financial literacy in schools, we're going to create a presidential financial fitness program. That would be one way that the president of the United States could actually get this in the school system. And there, I just cannot fathom that we can't get bipartisan agreement that there should be financial literacy in schools. And if we were ever going to have a president, honestly, that could pull this off, it would be President Trump. Yeah. No, you're right. It's, it's an important issue. We're going to watch that. David, thanks very much. Thank you guys Congrats very much. Congrats on the, on the new Appreciate book, it. 20 Years Later. David Bach joining us.